Welcome back. Chris Smith for Peter Credlin. Well, as we earlier reported, thousands of residents of drought-stricken New South Wales towns have simply watched as federal bureaucrats flushed away 22 billion litres of water down a dwindling river. Water from Wyangla Dam, released on orders from the independent Commonwealth Environment Water Holder, whatever that is, was enough to supply the population of the towns of Cowra, Condoblin and Forbes for over one year. Now, the dam level currently sits at only 18.2%. What were they thinking? Joining me now in studio to discuss this issue is the New South Wales Minister for Water, Property and Housing, Melinda Pavey. Minister, thank you very much for coming in. Hello, Chris. When I read this this morning, I didn't read the bit about what you'd said, and I thought, Melinda Pavey wouldn't do this. This had nothing to do with you. Can you explain what this bureaucratic body is all about and how they get around to making decisions like this? Chris, the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder is an independent statutory authority. Not even Susan Lay, the Minister for the Environment in Canberra, can direct it what to do. Uh, and Why? Because that is the way it has been set up that uh, both Susan Lay and, and I have inherited, me as the Water Minister in New South Wales, uh, and Susan Lay as the Environment Minister in Canberra, this is the part of the process of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. So as right. to ensure the integrity of environmental flows. Uh, and look, there are good reasons for that. But when I found out two weeks ago that 22 billion litres of water, 22 gigalitres, as you said, enough to supply those magnificent towns in the central west of New South Wales with water for a year, I was quite simply horrified and angry. Angry because I don't know, we don't know when this drought is going to break. And at some level, the environment, the river system, has to reflect the environment that we're in, which is a drought. Exactly. So if farming communities and farming land are suffering, the logical flow-on from that is the fact that the environment will suffer as well. What are we doing looking after the environment to that extent, to that extent, while farmers are screaming for a job? They have every reason to be furious about this, haven't they? They do, but also farmers understand we are in a drought and their allocations have been limited. In fact, we've had to limit carryover water in the Lachlan Valley. And we actually said to the two, we had one power, and that was to say, we're not allocating carryover water. So we actually stopped a further 16 billion litres going down the river. But that was because, complicated, but it's part of a water sharing plan. We've had to suspend carryover mm -hmm. because of the, the drought that we're in. Yep. And farmers understand they're not going to get all the allocations because we are in a drought, and especially the Lachlan system is down to 18%. The Hume and Dartmouth and, and the Goulburn system in the Murray and the Murrumbidgee, they're at a different level, uh, but we are down now to 18.4% uh, at Wyangla, a dam that we're committed to increasing the size by 650 gigalitres. That's, uh, that's, we're excited about that. But to no, we don't know when it's going to rain. Right. And, and particularly given the advice of the Bureau of Meteorology, you know, have we ever had a moment in time where we, that we hope and pray that they're wrong again? Mm. I hope that they're wrong. Yeah. I hope that we get beautiful East Coast lows, um, you know, in March and April and we replenish the Northern Basin in particular and the Central West. But we don't know when it's going to rain. Yeah. And I was, I was gobsmacked when one of my advisors said, oh, my God, they've just released 22 gigalitres down the river. And I think I, I, I mentioned it in Parliament last week and, and the communities themselves, I know the Mayor of Cowra, Bill West, he's cranky. Yeah. And there are a lot of good farmers down there with high security that might not be able to get that. I, I, I noticed today that we've been unable to determine what faceless bureaucrat made this decision. No-one's taken responsibility for it. Or do you know something that we don't know? Uh, no, I mean, I haven't been on the phone to the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder but and the, the CEO. But if the decision is a good one and there are good grounds for what they decided, where are they today holding a press conference and explaining it to the rural population of Australia? And defending their position. Yeah. Because one of the comments that was made in the media today from them, it reported to say, 
uh, that we need to keep the fish alive. Well, we do when we can. Yeah. And it's not that the fish aren't being kept alive because the river is actually flowing. Yes, we need to keep cattle alive. Surely that's more important right now. And for the, you know, the, 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 living, uh, the living things that exist, the human beings that exist and rely on water flow. That's my greatest heartache and worry. It's the towns, it's our communities. Yeah. You know, we're talking um, very challenging situations that we've never seen before. Mm. In our northern basin, we've only had 1.5% of the normal average inflows. Yeah. 31 months of record low rain. And, and I just remind everybody that only, you know, in 2016, the Newell Highway was cut for six weeks. Yeah. Menindee Lakes was at 90%. We had full dams. We had to actually um, overflow uh, Burundong Dam servicing Dubbo. And that is now down itself to 4.5%. Yeah. It does rain, it will rain, but sometimes we go for long periods without rain and you've got to make the proper decisions. And do you agree with New South Wales Nationals leader John Barillaro who came out on the subject of all of this saying, well, hang on a minute, shouldn't we put Fora and Flora aside for the time being? This is desperate. Forget about the rules related to the Murray-Darling Basin Scheme. John is absolutely right. Uh, he's a great leader. He's calling out uh, the behaviours and the concerns. He spent the last three weeks on the road, um, as we all have, meeting our communities, seeing the pain in people's faces. Yeah. And, and I just wish uh, some of the senior officials out of Canberra could actually be in some of the conversations we are in. Get out of the Territory and maybe visit a few fair income scenarios. And you, as a rural MP, would have been witness to so many sad and terrible stories at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, it is heartbreaking and I think it needed um, the attention that it's got because we cannot let this continue releasing major amounts of water when we don't even know whether we've got enough for our towns. Mm. And, and I suspect there'll be some good conversations um, through this that, you know, should have happened mm. sooner and earlier. Uh, by, by this attention, bringing that decision to account. Uh, and your point is well made, Chris. If, if this was a defendable position, why weren't they out defending it? Missing in action, MIA. Can I ask you to put on your old New South Wales Roads Minister hat for a second? I made mention when I was discussing with our panel about the road toll, it's uh, shifted, it's reduced by 0.2 for the same period up until September this year. It's almost stagnant. Um, you, you just wonder, with the millions and the tens of millions we spend trying to stop, save lives, as you did, and your legacy has been quite remarkable in New South Wales, but what else can we do? I think technology is going to be the secret, as well as improving some of our minor roads uh, and our thoroughfares. I mean, I've, I've had four fatalities in my electorate over the past few months on the Waterfall Way, the major beautiful road between yep. Armidale and Yurunga and the coast um, in northern New South Wales. But it is a tough road to drive. And particularly now that you can drive dual lane carriageway on the Pacific Highway, really stress-free driving, yep. you put the cruise control on. But then when you have to turn and, and go up the mountain or down the mountain, it's a very different style of driving. And I think that is, that is a challenge. Um, poor behaviour sometimes, again, by our younger kids, even though we've actually reduced the road toll significantly mm. with the extra driver training hours we've put into the system, yep. there is still a big challenge with just silly behaviour, whether they're tired or they've taken some drugs or, mm. you know, you, that's you really You in particular, tough. you pushed, you invented this mobile phone detection camera random system. So it increases the likelihood of people being caught because right now people are taking the chance of using their phone in the car because they don't think they're going to be caught. It's not, it's not difficult to get away with it. Yeah. We've got to increase that, right? We do. Um, and I didn't invent it. I'm not that clever. It was these no, really in, great invent tech the policy. Heads. Invent well, the policy. We, yeah, we listened to, to, to this policy idea um, and these you know, amazing uh, processes. Australia is leading that. And it's not. we don't want the money. We don't want that cash coming in. We just want people mm. to get off their phones. It's yeah. dangerous. But I do believe... I mean, given... You know, when my mum and dad talk about the fact that when they were growing up, you know, they knew two or three or four kids that died in crashes. Mm. So the road toll as a proportion of the total population was probably four or five times worse than what it is today. Fair enough. 
And I think it's only going to get better, despite an increase in population, mm. because of automation. Mm. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe, and it's going to take um, some more cynical members of our community a long what time to get to that point, but computers will drive better than us. Mm. Automation in our cars is the big game changer. Yep, yep. So you need a partnership, you need the great, uh, great technology, you need great roads, and there has been no government in New South Wales that has invested with the support of the Commonwealth. Mm. You know, we've almost finished the dual carriageway of the Pacific Highway. Then yeah. we're going to do the Princess Highway. Yeah. Then we're going to do, you know, um, you I, know the Great Western Highway. I've run out highway. of time. I've but, run out of time. We've got to go. Thank you so much for coming. But technology and driver behaviour and great infrastructure. Yeah, and personal responsibility. Thank you very oh, much for your time. Good point. Yeah.